Today we want to investigate the phenomena of extremely short exposure time, which means the 32 thousandths part of a second on the new RX10 Mark IV. This feature was also available on the RX10 Mark III already, or in some other cameras, like Fujifilm cameras, for example. But the more common standard in the mirrorless or even in the DSLR world was the 8 thousandths of a second. Can you imagine what it means? The 32 thousandths part of a second. This really makes it virtually possible to freeze time. When you remember the latest release of Sony, the Alpha 7R Mark II, which is a full frame sensor, even in this professional camera, the shortest exposure time was the 8 thousandths of a second. Now, we are four times shorter. This feature was also available in the revolutionary a9, which was just released after the A7R2. And here probably it has only been made possible because even also the A9 is a full frame sensor. It has 24 million pixel resolution instead of 42 million pixel. I'm not too sure about this detail, but back to the RX10 Mark IV. Here we have 20 million pixel of resolution on a much smaller sensor, which is only a one inch sensor, by the way. So it has a crop factor of 2.7 but still the pixel density on this small sensor is already very close to this 24 million pixels of Sony's latest flagship the A9. We are very happy that here in this video we are still able to compare those two latest RX10 cameras with each other because this incredible jump of picture quality will here in this video become so obvious and evident. Even though from outside at first glance it is almost not possible to make up which one is which. Still, the inner value has changed a lot. The RX10 Mark IV has imported the revolutionary focusing system from the A9. It has an additional focus range switch, which lifts focus quality to a new dimension. Even though the settings during this continuous focusing activity in both cameras were set to the same values, still the focus of the RX10 Mark III could not catch up with the precision of the RX10 Mark IV. Therefore, all photos shot at 600 millimeter focal length are slightly off, slightly soft edges, if you will. Whereas on the other hand, the photos shot with the RX10 Mark IV turned out to be lightning sharp and precise. Also, it seemed that the RX10 Mark III was trying to long for a generally bright exposed image, which led together with the high ISO because of incredibly short exposure time to a quite obvious image noise or digital film grain, how I like to call it. The RX10 Mark IV, on the other hand, tended to decide to really give space to the brightness and glossiness of every single drop and therefore all images got exposed more decently. So anyway, let's not lose too much time. We will play these two sequences now. You should know that the RX10 Mark III was shooting 10 images per second. So the movement of the drops is not so well understandable because of the larger gaps between each image. And at the same time, because of less memory, Already after 50 images it started to leak, so this was the moment then when I stopped to record continuous image function. Whereas the sequence of the RX10 Mark IV is going to be much longer because it shoots around 250 images in a row and this even at a speed of 24 images per second, which is almost like doing a movie at around 20 million pixel resolution. And this function I think in future is going to be very interesting and maybe even this is going to call some artists to action to come up with a completely different approach to the understanding of filming if you will. So never mind, enjoy these two sequences and also don't forget to like the video and follow our channel and of course if you're interested in more details about the RX10 Mark IV then just check our playlists in the corner up here. 